is episode number eight of the Two Grown Ups and a Mouse podcast. Today we will be talking about Disney transportation, Yachtsman Steakhouse, and Star Wars Rogue One. No spoilers, of course. I'm AJ. I'm Andrew. And you are listening to Two Grown Ups and a Mouse. The podcast. The podcast. Not to be confused with the social media. Or the website. Or the us. Right. <laughs> sure. Not to be confused with anything else. We are like nothing other. We are like no other. That's better. There you go. I want to use proper grammar. That sounds better. Because it's proper grammar. Well, it's only a podcast, so. That's okay. You can still use proper grammar. Okay. I can still use proper grammar. I, I don't. I won't. You know what else I can do? What? Follow us on social media. You could. I think you are. I am. Yeah. I'm following us on Facebook. Twitter. Instagram. And that's it. And I go to the website, two grown ups and a mouse. Dot com. Or if you do follow social media, two grown ups and a mouse. Right. No dot com. No dot com. You don't need that for the social media. No. But you do need to know two grown ups and all, so you can follow us and subscribe. Please subscribe. Yep. And if you already did, thank you. Yep. We appreciate it. We want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Give us your feedback wherever it's convenient for you. Social media, website, review on the podcast. Yep. But today, we're going to talk about three things like we most often do. Yep. Today, we're going to talk about Disney transportation. Mm-hmm. One of our favorite restaurants, Yachtsman Steakhouse, and Star Wars Rogue One. Yep. Kind of an eclectic, eclectic mix there. They usually are. Just have to, you know, randomly throw darts at a board and we'll get a show. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. We threw darts at a board and we said, okay, first subject, Disney Transportation. Okay, next dart, second subject, Yachtsman Steakhouse. Not exactly how it worked, but uh, close, close enough. It's a good story. <laughs> yeah. Or you could you could say, you know, we were going to go see Star Wars Rogue One when we were at Disney after we had dinner at Yachtsman Steakhouse, and we used transportation to get back and forth between it all. It would be a lie. It would be, but... We could have said that, though. It's a good story, too. So why don't we start with Disney transportation? Sure. Disney does provide a lot of complementary forms of transportation. Yes, they do. And it starts before you even get to the parks. Right. And, of course, we are talking about Walt Disney World because that's what we're more familiar with. Right. So if you are staying on property at a Walt Disney World resort, you can take the Magical Express mm -hmm. to get from MCO, the right. Orlando International Airport, to Disney property. And they will take you to your resort. Sure. So that's a pretty wonderful amenity that they're providing mm -hmm. since a lot of people want to go to Walt Disney World. Right. And it can be expensive getting an airline flight, getting a hotel room, getting food for your stay, and then getting park tickets on top of that. Of course. And that's not including any souvenirs or other discretionary spending right. that you're going to do. So it can be a hefty endeavor to go to Walt Disney World. Sure. If you live in Florida, as we do, we have the benefit of not needing to pay for airline tickets. That's a huge savings right. for us. We have the benefit of getting the pass holder. You know, we're pass holders and we get an annual pass. Not everybody is able to do that. So you need to find ways to cut corners and save money. Sure. But Disney wants to help people do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they do have the Magical Express. Right. It is a bus service and they are Disney themed. Sure. You may have seen them in right. or around the Disney parks. Of course. And it is a complimentary service. There are participating airlines. So if you do want to utilize Magical Express, then you will need to make sure by going to the DisneyWorld.com website that you are able to to use the service, you know, because there are, as, as with everything else, there are limitations, Sure. different things um, that you're going to want to know about. We don't have kids, so we're not going to go into the car seat 
right. you know, bringing that on. That's a, another discussion of course. for for people who would better be able to answer that than we would. Exactly. But uh, but that is an option. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to the parks, again, there are a few ways that you could get around right. that Disney provides as part of your experience of staying on property. Right. This is the benefit that they're going to give you. And it's more buses. Or boats. Well, we're going to talk about them one by one. Well. So we're going to start with the buses. Sure. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a really short podcast. Yeah. So they do have buses. And they have multiple buses that will go to all the different resorts. Mm -hmm. And they don't just, for example, have one bus that goes to Pop Center Resort and then brings you wherever. They literally will have... I want to say about eight different bus stops in the front of the resort. Depends on the resort. Uh, right. Some of them share bus stops or share. Right. Um, but generally, generally speaking, there will be one bus for Magic Kingdom, one bus for Epcot, one bus for Hollywood Studios, one bus for Animal Kingdom, right. one bus for Disney Springs. And sometimes... I want to say, is it the Disney Springs bus that shares with the water parks? Uh, no, it depends on, I think it depends on which one. Uh, I, I don't remember. All right, but they do share. Sometimes they don't. It's not necessarily right. just one bus. It depends on where you're going. Right. And then dependent upon that, that's going to determine how long it's going to take. They recently made an upgrade to their busing system. And now at many of the resorts, they have monitors right. where you could see what the wait time is right? so that if you're waiting for a bus instead of being, you know, because it used to be like, what did it say? You know, a bus will be here every 15 minutes or every 20 minutes. For, yeah, I, think, for I think it was I think it was 20 minutes was the, the promise. And, and most of the time it was sooner than that, but. Right, but they, they yeah. said, you know, the buses are continually running and they will show up approximately every 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, now many of the stops have these monitors at them. So instead of blindly going, I wonder how long it's going to be till the next bus, at least you can have an idea. And right. they do upkeep that, you know, they, they update that regularly right? so that it has the most up-to-date information and you will have an idea of how long it's going to take you. Sure. But if you take a bus to Magic Kingdom from a resort, you're going to go straight to Magic Kingdom. Correct. But if you drive your own car, or rental car, of course, but if you drive to Magic Kingdom, you don't go up to the front. No. You go to the Transportation and Ticket Center. That's where you're actually parking, as in the right. lot of the Transportation and Ticket Center. But you need a means to get from the Transportation and Ticket Center to get to Magic Kingdom. You sure. parked your car. Now you need to get to the park. So the first thing you're going to do is another form of Disney transportation, and that's their trams. Mm -hmm. Years ago, the trams had no doors on them. Right. And unfortunately, that became a safety issue. Yep. So they have since put doors on the trams. And they're much safer that way. They still do ask that children sit in the center. Sure. And that you fold up your strollers or whatever you're bringing with you. But the trams will take you from the parking lot to the park. Sure. Now, as I said, if you're going to Magic Kingdom, that means you're going to the Transportation and Ticket Center. If you were going to Epcot, Animal Kingdom or Hollywood Studios, you're actually parking in the parking lot of that park. Right. There's no there's no lake in the middle. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a little it's a little tricky to get over the lake. Right. So the the first step from the transportation and ticket center, or if you're parking at any of the other parks, is you can take a tram. Mm -hmm. Now personally uh, and we've mentioned before that we are not very light people. We are a little on the heavier side, so not necessarily the most fit people. But even so, a lot of the times we prefer to just walk. Sure. 
And it's really kind of amusing because a lot of people see the trams and that's what you do. You park and you take the tram and you get to the front of the park. They don't realize how long or short, depending on where you're parked, they don't realize how close they may or may not be. Right. They're just kind of following the herd. Oh, sure. So it's something to keep in mind that if you can see the front of the park, sometimes you might just want to walk there. It also depends. I mean, if you're a few days into your trip and you've been doing a lot of walking and you want to save yourself to make sure you feel better in the park, maybe you do want to take the tram and you want to save that energy. Of course. You know, I, I think for us, a lot of the times we'll walk in, you know, we'll park and we'll end up walking in instead of getting on the tram. But right. depending on when we're leaving, if we're leaving and it's not too busy, then we'll utilize the trams to get back to the car. Sure. I mean, that's. You you have a multitude of options. You're not well, that's limited. That's how we usually do it. Yeah, and you're, yes. but you you have the option. You know, it's not like oh, I took the tram in. I have to take the tram back. Right. I walked in. I have to walk back. I mean, you whatever suits your style or fits you at that moment is your option. Right. But let's go back to Magic Kingdom. Now you've taken the tram and you're actually at the transportation and ticket center, mm -hmm. which is a nice little area. I kind of like it because there are restrooms on either side. Yep. So if you need to use the restroom, that's a great place to go as opposed to waiting until you get up to the front of the park. Right. And then, it, it, you know, you have to go through the the turnstiles. You may or may not have to go through security at that point, depending on if you had done it already or not. So, you well the 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 bag security is now at, at ticket, and tra t ticket and transportation center. So if you walk in or you take the tram, you're going to go through a bag check before you can get to. I don't know exactly where they're doing it at the moment. Uh, I don't know if it's before or after the ticketing windows. Right. Uh, but either way, before you get to the that interior part where you're going to choose between right. monorail or, or ferry. You have gone through bag check. Right. But it's a nice little area because there are restrooms on either side and there's a little gift shop there. Right. So let's say you're going into the park and it looks a little overcast. You can get a poncho from the gift shop. Sure. Let's say you've left the park, but you forgot to pick something up. You can run into the gift shop and maybe they might sell it there. Um, there are also vending machines in the area so you can get sodas. Yep. And it's. And and most importantly, lest I forget, there's a Joffrey's coffee stand there. There is. That you could purchase coffee, tea, snacks. Donuts. Donuts. They have pretty big donuts at Joffrey's Coffee. Those, those donuts are huge. Yeah, they're pretty big. But So it's just a really nice area before you're getting into the park. It's, it's a nice place. You can get a, a lot of things done there if you need to. Right. But then as you already glazed over now you have two choices for how you want to get to magic kingdom park you can take the monorail mm -hmm. which is basically for anyone who hasn't been on it or isn't familiar with it well probably most people listening know what the monorail is mm -hmm. but how would you describe it kind of like a train almost well i you know i think most people know what a monorail is but yeah, it's a it's a train ish kind of thing, and and it's overhead, right? But it's they're really neat because the way that the vehicles operate is they kind of surround the track, don't they? I mean, the, the monorail is not just going to tip over. No, 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 definitely not. the The monorail rides over the track on both you know both sides surround it, and then there's there's actually tires that run along the the concrete and when you see the track you'll see there's a big you know there's a basically a a black groove all the way around the track line so and that's from the the tires that are running against it so right but like i said you're not going to tip over no, in no. the monorail because of the way it's positioned on the track it, you know and, and affixed to the track so that you are safely up there oh, of course but maybe some people don't want to be high up. Maybe they have a fear of heights. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to take the monorail, there is another option. The ferry that, boat. That is a ferry boat. And there are two ferry boats, correct? Yes. Or, or more. Well, they might have more, but I, there's generally they, two running. Right. They typically run two at a time. Right. So that when one leaves, the other one is on its way and vice versa. 
Right. It, it's meant to be if they're really running in sync, they meet in the middle and then they're at each other at the two stations at the same time. Right. And they uh, there are places to sit on the ferry, but not many. There's more the ferry boats, two stories, basically. There's two levels and there's there's more seating upstairs. We usually don't bother going up to to sit down cuz it's not that long a ride, so uh so that so we we generally stay down below where there's only a few benches. Right. And if you're unless you're the first one running into the ferry, you're probably not going to get those benches. <laughs> right. So if you really need to sit down, then the monorail might be a better option for you mm -hmm. because you are more likely to get a seat on the monorail. People tend to be considerate if you are elderly, handicapped, have a small child, right. or otherwise need to be sat. Sure. Most people will, will be polite enough and say, here, you can have my seat. Right. So if you need to sit down, then the monorail might be a better option for you. But the ferry is another option. And what we like to do sometimes is take one mode of transportation into the park mm -hmm. and a different mode of transportation out of the park. Right. Because they're both fun in their own way. Yeah. And a lot of people, I don't think, even realize the ferry is there. Some people are just so accustomed to going on the monorail that they just keep on going on the monorail. Right. You well, know? it's the first thing that you see when you when you walk past, you know, as you're walking – as you take the tram up into the tra ticket and transportation center, you walk past the ticket stands. You know, you've gone through security. So the first thing you see is the monorail. And you see the tracks all over the place while you're, you know, as you're, as you're coming in from the parking lot, you see tracks going all the way around. So it's, it's prominent. And there are, there are three monorail lines mm -hmm. because there is the one line and, and they are very distinctly marked. So you will get on the proper monorail of depending course. upon where you want to go. There is the monorail that goes to Magic Kingdom, the express monorail. Yep. But if you are staying on property on one of the resorts on the monorail line, mm -hmm. the Contemporary, the Polynesian, and the Grand Floridian, yep. there is that monorail line, right. the resort line, but that line does stop at the Transportation and Ticket Center. Sure. The express monorail only stops at Magic Kingdom and the Transportation and Ticket Center. Right. The resort line stops at all five of them. The right. three resorts, the park, and the Transportation and Ticket Center. Yep. The third monorail line will take you between Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Well, the, the Ticket and Transportation Center Excuse and Epcot. Excuse me. I apologize. I, I misspoke. Yeah. But, yeah, so you if you wanted to go to Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. and Epcot within the same day, you could park at the Transportation and Ticket Center yep. and take the monorail to one or the other mm -hmm. and then take the monorail back to the Transportation and Ticket Center and go to the park that you didn't visit yet. So, which we actually did relatively recently. Yeah. We, we didn't done it, done it a few times. We didn't have any plans recently. So we right. said, let's park. And then we got on the monorail. And I believe we went to Epcot first. Yeah, because I think, I think you wanted to buy something at did I want to buy a Dooney? Uh, no. no that <laughs> Could sounds, that be it? That sounds very out of character for you. That couldn't have been it. Uh, I don't Was it the Dooney that you wanted to buy? You wanted to buy something at Epcot, so. Right. Or I wanted to see if they had something there or right. whatever. And we didn't have any plans for that day. So it was nice because we just took the monorail and we were able to go between the two parks. So if you have an annual pass or you are using your park hopper option. Right. It's nice to be able to go back and forth. We were talking about the ferry boats, mm -hmm. but there are other modes of transportation on the water For about about and around sure. Walt Disney World. One of them, Magic Kingdom, since we were talking about the ferry boats. If you were staying at the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian, or Fort Wilderness, mm -hmm. you could take a boat yep. from your resort straight to Magic Kingdom. Yeah. If you were staying at Swan and Dolphin, Yacht Club, Beach Club or Boardwalk, you can take a boat to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. Right. And what's neat about that boat is it basically is a big circle. Right. And it goes, you know, between Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Swan and Dolphin, Yacht Club, Beach Club, and the Boardwalk. Sure. So if you are at Epcot and you decide you want to go to Hollywood Studios, mm -hmm. that's an option going oh, yeah. there via boat. 
Right. Another option between the two is there is a walkway. Yep. There's a pathway. And you and I have done that a couple of times. Yeah. It's not horrible. It's a little on the long side. Yeah, it's a, it's a longer walk. And it's, you know, if it's hot outside, just be aware. <laughs> I was just going to say it's weather, de- weather dependent. Right. Because it is a longer walk. But it's definitely doable. Uh, we've even done it before. Sure. And as I already stated in the same podcast, we are not necessarily the most fit people. So <laughs> I feel like if we can do it, you can do it. Sure. And then another place that offers boat transportation is if you want to go to Disney Springs. If you're staying at Port Orleans, either French Quarter or Riverside, yep. or if you're staying at Old Key West, Saratoga Springs, or the associated Treehouse Villas, mm-hmm. there is boat transportation between those resorts and Disney Springs. Yep. But there's one more. Well, actually, there's probably more that we're forgetting about. Actually, there are. There's two more <laughs> types of transportation that we can talk about. Sure. One is relatively new, mm-hmm. and that is the mini van. Yep. Or the mini van van, right? Yeah. It's actually the mini van SUV. Well, I think technically it's a <laughs> minivan SUV. But. <laughs> but they call it the minivan. Right. And it is a service provided by Lyft. Mm-hmm. There's Uber and there's Lyft, but this is provided by Lyft. Right. And you can take a a Lyft mm-hmm. between different resorts and different parks in the Walt Disney World area. Right. And the vans or SUVs are decorated to look like mini. They're red with white polka dots. They're actually kind of cute. Oh, yeah. And they charge $25. Right. I don't believe it matters on the number of people going, but of course, each vehicle will only accommodate so many people. And they do have wheelchair accessible lifts. However, they're limited, so it might take a little bit longer. Right. If you do need one to pick you up in a wheelchair, you can definitely get it, but the availability is less, so it might take a little bit longer for right. them to get to you. But that's relatively new and, and relatively popular. Yeah. A lot of people really enjoy that. We have not done that yet, but I hope that we'll be able to try that once just so we can say, we did it. Sure. It was fun. I mean, once a long time ago, we were park hopping with some people we met on Facebook or Instagram, mm-hmm. and we ended up at Yacht Club. Right. And it was freezing. Yeah. And we needed to get back to our car we had started the event that day at the grand floridian so we were parked across the street from the grand floridian so we ended up calling for a taxi yep but this was before uber and lyft so this was a few years ago but the minivan by lyft is definitely an option for transportation Mm -hmm. the second one to talk about and it's our last form of transportation we're going to talk about today is something that isn't there yet right but it's being built yep and it's the skyway yeah. It's a gondola style system that will take people between Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Caribbean Beach, and Art of Animation slash Pop Century. Right. Even though they are two different resorts, Art of Animation and Pop Century, there's a short bridge right. that connects the two locations. We've well, walked we've walked that as well. You know, we stay I think we were staying at Pop Century and wanted to eat at Art of Animation. Right. So we walked over there, and that's a very quick walk. Well, that, that happened because Pop Century was originally going to be two phases. Right now it goes 50s to 90s. The other side, which is now what Art of Animation was, was going to be another phase of basically Pop Century. But it in the, in the early 2000s, when the economy collapsed and everything, they kind of put it on hold. So, and then shelved it until they decided to make art animation which is great because that's a really nice looking resort i mean that's that is a lot of fun that resort the color scheme and the layout and you know it's it's almost set up like magic kingdom yeah because there's different areas different lands (laughs) (laughs) right exactly that's what i was thinking you know there's like finding nemo and there's the cars and there's little mermaid i believe so Uh It's just, it's really a, a nice resort. But either way, that gondola system is being built right now. Yep. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that'll be fun. You know what else I'm looking try. forward to? What? Talking about Yachtsman. I think we should do that. Okay. Okay, let's talk about Yachtsman. Steakhouse. 
You are a man of so many words. Well, it was either that or, or people that are sailing boats, so. Mm -hmm. And there's no, no sailing boats at Disney, so. It is a signature restaurant. Yep. Located at? The Yacht Club. Which is right next door to? The Beach Club. And they are both on? The Boardwalk? Yes. All right. They are, they are all connected. You could walk the Boardwalk, big circle, from Epcot to the Boardwalk mm -hmm. to Yacht Club is first. If you were going in that, if, if you're going from Epcot to the Boardwalk, if you're going in that direction. Well, uh, that, that would be going clockwise around the Boardwalk. So Correct. So, yeah, you would come to the Yacht Club yacht first, first and then, and then, then the Beach, Beach Club. Club. Because they are right next door to each other. Right. And a lot of the times if we've had a reservation at Yacht Club, at Yachtsman Steakhouse, and we have a lot of time to kill, we'll walk right next door. Yeah. Go to Boardwalk, go to their gift shop, and then walk right back because they are right next door. Right. You can actually walk inside for some of that. But we have been going to Yachtsman Steakhouse for years. Oh, yeah. We've been going there for, for quite a while now. And it is really a great place for special occasions. Yep. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, any kind of celebration. Of course, you don't have to have a celebration to go there. You don't need an excuse. It's a great restaurant. If you want to go have a good steak while you're on Disney property, they have really, really enjoyable food there. And I know... In a previous podcast, we were talking about saving money on food. Mm -hmm. And something that I like to do at Yachtsman Steakhouse is get their kids meal. Yeah. Because you still get an enjoyable steak, mm -hmm. but it's a lot less expensive. Right. And even more importantly, it saves room in your belly. Yep. So you can enjoy the appetizers and you can enjoy the desserts. Or the sides. Or the sides. Right. We... Also, when we go, we have a regular server there. Mm -hmm. This is pretty common with us. If we go to a restaurant a lot, we get a regular <laughs> server and we become friendly with him. So whenever we know that we're going to go there, I'll text him and say, hey, we're, are you working? We're coming. And then he tries to get us ideal seating, though we're not too picky. No. But sometimes he'll ha his station will have seating by the window. Right. And that's really nice because it overlooks the pool. And the yeah. pool at the yacht club is beautiful. It and has, have a, they have a sand beach. And like a windmill. Yeah, there's that, a windmill. It looks like a windmill a, to me. There's a, a quasi-lazy river-ish kind of thing. It's not it's not a, a lazy river in the typical sense of being big and long and windy, but there's a there's a little one there and, the, and, a, and a sand beach, which is funny because sometimes the ducks will be swimming in it. And then if, you, if you're not paying attention, you kind of think it is a beach because... There's beach chairs and there's ducks swimming in the lake and there's sand and right. sand castles. And but that's that's their <laughs> that's their, their pool. pool. <laughs> but you can also see if you're looking out the window, so you have a view of the pool, which is a nice view. But you can see very little of the Epcot fireworks. Right. But you can kind of see them a little bit. I wouldn't go I would definitely would not go to Yachtsman if you want to watch the Epcot fireworks. But it is something you can see if you do get a window view sure. from the restaurant. But we really enjoy their fillet. That's yep. our steak of choice. And well, and I don't. I've tried. I've done. I've done. Uh, well, I've done three different steaks there before in the past. So I've done the strip, and then the fillet, and then there's a new one. Well, not it's not that new anymore. But they have a a wagyu strip loin, which is all of them are fantastic. I always say people probably think I'm overdoing it a little bit but stay uh yachtsman is probably a very very good steakhouse i guess is the best way to put it it's it's better than you know many of the chain restaurants so i, I put it up with i put it up there at the same level as really good steakhouses so in your neighborhood if you if you know of a really good steakhouse yachtsman is, a, is at that level but you don't have to get too dressed up no, it's not. A, it's it's a, it's still Disney. So right, no tank tops, no swimwear. You know they do have their dressing requirements. Right, but their attire. But you don't have to get too dressed up, sure. which is nice because sometimes you just want to go there after you've been in the parks. Right. Sometimes you want to go there because you're celebrating something and you are a little bit dressed up, and either is accepted. Right, and we see it's one of the. It is kind of a funny. It's one of the restaurants where you see that a lot where you'll see 
the family just coming in for some dinner, and then you'll also see a couple celebrating their anniversary. And they're dressed up. He's in a suit. She's wearing a dress. And then next to him is, is the folks that are wearing shorts and T-shirts. And it's just a... You don't get that at most other Disney restaurants. Yeah, it's an, it's so. an eclectic mix. Yeah. But what I often get when we go there is lobster bisque. Mm-hmm. We tried, well, not we tried, we accomplished making lobster bisque one year when we were doing a Mother's Day or Father's Day dinner. And it was quite expensive to make oh, yeah. by the time we bought the heavy cream, lobster, and everything that you need to make a bisque. Sure. So I really appreciate it more. And now when I see lobster bisque on a menu, I will often purchase it because... It's worth it. Yeah. As opposed to having to make it. But they do have a Caesar salad. They do have a wedge salad. Mm -hmm. They have a French onion soup. And they have an assortment of appetizers available. Right. Some of them are crab cakes, cheese plate, or charcuterie board, or as Andrew pronounces it. Delicatessen. Good job. If you didn't listen to the previous episode, you should go listen to that one. Yes. That will explain why I said that. (laughs) But what's nice about being a steakhouse is they do have seafood entrees as well as beef entrees. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you can always get a chicken. You... They often have pasta on their menu. Right. The menu does change sporadically. So right now, when we are taping this, they're offering a scallop dish. Right. But they didn't have that for the longest time because that was one of my favorites. And it is currently back on the menu along with lobster, shrimp scampi, or if you want to do Oscar style and get the asparagus with the jumbo lump crab and the béarnaise sauce. Mm-hmm. But what they what we used to always go there for not necessarily so much anymore was their truffle mac and cheese. Right. You and I prefer the old recipe. Yeah. It was a more simple white cheese macaroni and cheese with some truffle. Well, it was it was a it was a the new one is is pasta, smoked gouda, peppers and spinach. The old one was uh, Gurye cheese, mm. pasta, and that was it. There was no spinach, no peppers. Um, both of them obviously have truffle because they're both truffle mac and cheese. So, mm. But we'll have to ask them next time we're there if they can make one without the peppers and spinach. Right, because we didn't know that they had changed the menu, right. and we ordered it, and then they brought it out to us, and I was not, it was not too fond of it no it wasn't bad but it wasn't to my liking well it was, and it was especially because you weren't expecting it i think that's probably the the biggest right. part of it was i was just expecting a pasta with cheese on it right. and i got pasta and cheese and peppers and spinach right so like i said not bad at all but just not what i was expecting but their sides are really good they also have a twice baked potato which we've tried well that's really good too yeah twice. that was really good and their mashed potatoes are really good yeah I, I, we I, we haven't really had anything that was bad per se. Even the the mac and cheese that we got that we didn't like, I don't think it was necessarily bad. It just wasn't to our taste. Exactly. Right. But they're desserts. I always save room for dessert when we go to Yacht Club. And they do have some really good desserts there. My favorite, which I started eating a few years back, is creme brulee. That is definitely one of my favorites. And they do have a creme brulee there. That is quite enjoyable. What I'm not a big fan of is their chocolate desserts pretty much all are salted now. Well, and you don't like salted chocolates. I I'm not a fan of salted chocolate or salted caramel. If I, I, I don't mind it in a chocolate-covered pretzel. Mm-hmm. But to just have a piece of chocolate with salt on it, it's not to my liking. Though it's very popular and a lot of people like it. And, right. But it's funny because once I picked up a piece of chocolate not knowing that it was salted... And I took a bite of it, and I made this face because I got the salt first. Right. It's like, yeah, it's just not something that I prefer. It's almost as good as the face that you made when when you tasted my favorite dessert at Yacht Club. And yeah, the Yacht Club is one of the few places that has a scotch flight. The Yachtsman Steakhouse has yeah. a scotch flight. That's right. And you didn't didn't like you don't like the taste of scotch. I do not like the taste of scotch. Oh. Not even a little bit. Well. 
It's too bad you didn't get a picture of me. Well, you did get some pictures of me, but not the the first initial reaction. Yeah, I mean, because that was probably the first time you've ever had scotch, or and close to one of the last times I ever had or will have scotch because yeah. I just do not care for that. No, no, definitely not. But, but yes. that's okay because that saves us a lot of money. Right. But they do have coffee, mm-hmm. espresso, cappuccino. I believe they have a press pot there. Yep. So. Oh. It's it's a really enjoyable meal, and if you do get a chance to go check out Yachtsman Steakhouse, we will be going there end of September, beginning of October. Give or take. As I've mentioned before, that's when we celebrate our anniversary, so it's traditional. Yep. We traditionally go to Yachtsman Steakhouse. Yeah. And this time, hopefully, we'll have some friends joining us. Yep. We did invite our friends to come with us because we want them to experience Yachtsman Steakhouse, and hopefully they'll like it as much as we do. Sure. Along with our server. Exactly. <laughs> he's 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 part of the experience now. So he is part of the experience. Hopefully, they will like it just as much as we do, and hopefully, they will like it just as much as we like Star Wars. Star Wars. We love Star Wars. Yep. We're really into Star Wars. That's why we we're going to re- review Rogue One. Not really review it, but just kind of discuss it for a little bit. Sure. And whenever we talk about a movie. We will save it for the end of our podcast because maybe you haven't seen it and you don't want to hear about it. So we want to give you a chance to say bye-bye, good night. Exactly. You know, if you don't want to hear anything. So we're giving you ample opportunity that we are going to begin a discussion on Star Wars Rogue One. Even though this movie came out quite some time ago, there are some people that maybe they're just getting into Star Wars. So we're going to do our best not to give any major spoilers. Right. Because... We want you to hopefully experience it without any preconceived notions, if that's your choice, you know. Right. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you don't want to hear about it, it would be a good time to say goodnight. And right. Remember to subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you in our next podcast. Exactly. No, we won't. We won't see you. We'll hear you in our next podcast. Well, Only we won't. You'll hear us. We won't hear you. Unless you give us feedback. And Correct. you can do that on the website. You can use your voice and record feedback for us. Yeah, you can leave us a message. But we digress. I think on that note, we should really get into Star Wars Rogue One. All right. We just rewatched it last night, didn't we? Well, just so we would refresh our memories. We did. And I liked it just as much now as yep. I did the first time I watched it. Uh, a few people, it's not their favorite. Oh. For me... I enjoy it because I felt like it really explained how the first Star Wars movie, Mm -hmm. you told me I can't call it Star Wars A New Hope, (laughs) because that was not the original name. It was just Star Wars. That's right. But to make it easier for the listeners to understand what I'm I'm referring to, I'm going to call it Star Wars A New Hope. That's fine. So Rogue One really helped explain... The storyline. It was a really good prequel in that sense. Right. And it's, it's, it answered, it, it, it had almost become, I don't want to necessarily say a joke, but it's almost become almost a meme of Star Wars is why did they build this giant planet killing space station, but they left a giant hole in the side that would blow the whole thing up. They even made fun of it and like Family Guy and, uh, you know. <laughs> That's kind of a spoiler if you haven't seen A New Hope. However, considering that that movie came out in 1978, yeah, I a, think we're okay. 40 years ago. So, <laughs> um, so, and that's actually how Rogue One came about is one of the people that worked on the original Star Wars came up in his head and said, how did these people get these plans? How did this, you know, what was, what happened right before Star Wars happened in order to set the things in motion that happened in, the, in, in A New Hope. And he had kept this to himself and until he started working with Lucasfilm and the story developed. Right. And they introduced a lot of new characters. I'm not going to name all of them, but with a new movie came new characters. Sure. Jyn or so. Yeah. And I thought that that was a good character yeah i she, mean she played it well cassie and andor mm-hmm. my favorite in the movie k2so he is great he is the comic relief of the movie yeah most of the comedic lines came from him yeah i can think of some other lines that came from others but the majority 
No, um, he, was, he was definitely the comic relief. Yeah, he, he was the comic relief in the movie. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the next one. Uh, yeah. Because they don't really use his name that often. Or, or they're saying it so fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they say his last name if, maybe once or twice, but Chirut or yeah. Chirut or something is along those lines. Right. And then his sidekick. Right. Is is Baze. Right. And and they were an enjoyable he, pair. And and Shrewd is the is the blind p person that uh, he's not a Jedi, but he uh, semi thinks he is. Or he's learned to utilize the power of the Force. Right, which he's, is he's connecting if, himself. He's he's like a, a yoga master trying to. Well, it's it's uh, depending on how deep you want to get into Star Wars nerddom. A person could harness some parts of the Force and not actually be a Jedi. That would explain him, right? Pretty closely. And then, so that's I don't I don't want to nerd out too much because people will probably start falling asleep. But that's the general general idea is that you can be you can harness some of it without being that because because the Jedi is just basically the quote unquote good guys. So so like the the Emperor was not a Jedi. He obviously was powerful in the Force. And well, we've seen other bad guys in some of the other movies. Right. The Force isn't always used for good. Right. And they're not, not always Jedis that are... Right. Right. But we do not typically go to the movies, not on a regular basis. Right. However, with the new releases mm -hmm. of the, the new Star Wars movies that have come out, The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, yep. Solo... Mm-hmm. A Star Wars story. They that is when we do go to the movie theater. Sure. Because they are really best viewed in that ambiance. Right. The big screen with the noise and the lighting. So it's really enjoyable to go see movies of this caliber in a movie theater. Right. And we did see this one in the theater. Yep. It's really nice now that they do have reserved seating. In theaters. Oh, yeah. Previously, actually, with with uh, The Force Awakens, we that was prior, at least in our area, I don't believe that they had really instituted reserved seating yet. So we went to like a premiere theater mm -hmm. where it was 18 and above in that area, and there were, was reserved seating, and you could dine up in that area. Right. But now our local theater offers reserved seating and it's great. Yeah. And we said we should go see more Disney movies and Star Wars movies and Marvel movies. Right. In the cinema because we could have reserved seating, which is the most important thing to me. And they, the really great, comfortable seats. Yeah. It's not, like, it's not like the old days where they tried to, you know, every, even the small auditorium had seats for 400 people. So. Right. But we really, we really liked the movie. We really enjoyed. I mean, I shouldn't speak for you, but you would stop me if I was wrong. <laughs> uh, but we really enjoyed how it told the story. I know there's some controversy over that. Some people think. I, I remember talking to someone, a Star Wars fan, that I met at a previous job of mine, and he felt like it too conveniently wrapped everything up. Right. But I didn't mind that because ultimately, it's still the Star Wars universe. They're on their own timeline, and it's okay because it is a movie. Well, in that, in that case, it, it almost had to be that way because it ham it was such a very highly specific story that, you know, we, we didn't see that. I mean, we're not talking about it now, but like in Solo, there's a lot, we saw a lot more characters, and they weren't all wrapped up by the end. So there's there's room there for whether they do a sequel or not. It's just those characters just went on and and did whatever they did as a, as time went on, and in this one it's it's, a, it's such a very specific uh, storyline that and if you've seen the movie you understand why it, there it wraps up right, but we enjoyed it. If you haven't seen Star Wars movies, you should check them out. Sure, and maybe you won't like them, and that's okay too. Right. Not everyone likes Star Wars. Not yeah. everyone likes rom-coms. Not everyone likes sci-fi. Everyone has their own choice. But if you haven't seen it, I always recommend try it. 
before you base judgment on it. Sure. Um, because the Star Wars movies, especially these newer generation movies that have just come out within the past few years, have been quite enjoyable. Oh yeah, they've really yeah. they've really done a good job of entertaining, of keeping true to the Star Wars story that had already been established forty years ago or sure. starting forty years ago. So we really like it, and of course they're available now for download, streaming, yep. purchase. You know because. It wasn't too long ago that they came out. Right. But it's not too long from now that I need to go to bed. Really? Yeah. It's that time again. It's always that time. I need a lot of sleep. Yeah. Well, it's good for you. Yeah. I should probably get more sleep than I do. Probably. You know why I don't? Why? Because I'm busy recording podcasts. Well. But I enjoy it, so it's okay. All right. I don't mind. It's okay if I miss sleep, you know. Because I'm doing fun stuff. Oh. But if you haven't already, please subscribe. Yep. Find us. Well, you found us already, so. Uh, yeah, I, if you got this I, far. I probably don't have to tell you how to find us during the podcast. Right. But if you didn't go to our social media, please feel free to visit us on Facebook. Twitter. Instagram. All of them. Two Grown Ups and a Mouse. Yeah, or you could go to our website. Yep. Two Grown Ups and a Mouse. Dot com. Yep. So please visit us. Please Give us your feedback. Yep. We would love to hear from you. Yep. We would love to read from you. You like that one? Read yeah. from you? Read from you. But you can literally leave us a voice message or you can send us text. Yeah. Send us send us words. But we would love your feedback. Tell us whatever you want to tell us. Right. Because we want to see what you have to tell us. It would be interesting to know. That seems repetitive, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we do want to hear from you. Absolutely. On that note, I'm going to bed, so I'm going to say good night. Good morning? Well, some people might be listening to it in the morning, so they okay. can say good morning. All right. Or good afternoon. Or how about just goodbye? That's probably better. All right. Bye. Bye.